When I took these Pink Beauties out for their first run, I was actually really impressed with how they performed. And it was one of the first carbon plated trail running shoes that felt pretty good. It was a challenging 12 mile run with a thousand meters of elevation and it coped with everything fine. Since then, I put some good mileage into the shoe, including a epic mountain run out here in the mountains of Chamonix. So let's dive into the video and find out if it's still performing well. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well and you can probably tell that we are still out on our amazing French adventure and we are coming live to you today from our amazing outdoor studio in Chamonix. A pretty impressive view behind me I think and it's actually really nice to be filming a, a shoe review outside. If you've been enjoying the content from Chamonix of late then you know what to do, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but don't forget to hit that that bell icon as well so you'll then be notified when we upload any new exciting mountain running content so before we dive into how the edges perform I'm going to give you guys a few facts and figures and I'm going to break down the construction in a bit more detail so firstly the price it is a pretty expensive trail shoe and it retails in the UK for a whopping 200 pounds weight wise it comes in at 260 grams in a men's UK 9.5 we've got a six mil heel offset so you've got 35 mil at the heel and 29 mil under your forefoot don't worry it is available in three different colorways so you don't have to have a bright pink shoe if you don't want one and when it comes to sizing i'd say it's true to size with average width in the toe box when it comes down to the construction let's start with the midsole first so worked inside that midsole is Sokini's carbide x carbon fiber plate and this has been designed specifically for trail running and Sokini claim that it's going to adapt to the trail running conditions you're running on so when you're running or hiking uphill it's going to give you a really good level of stiffness for sort of forward momentum and propulsion but when you've hit the top and you're running down the other side it's going to adapt to that downhill motion becoming a little bit more flexible giving you a bit more ground feel and stability. Sokini have used their high energy returning very comfortable performance based compound power run PB in the midsole. This is the same compound they've been using for a few years now in their performance road shoes the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed so you can see the edge really has been designed Design with speed and performance in mind. When you throw in Sokini's brilliant speed roll technology, you are left with one very quick pair of trail running shoes. Coating the bottom of that midsole, we have a full blown rubber power track outsole. Uh, so this has offered really good levels of grip and traction. Uh, I've been a big fan of this rubber compound over the years and it tends to offer a very consistent level of grip. We've got a multi-directional lug pattern with a four mil depth. So it's kind of been designed to cross over to a big mix of terrains finishing up when it comes to that midsole construction we've got a flexible rock plate under that outsole to offer you a bit of underfoot protection but also to help when it comes to durability of that power run pb compound moving up to the upper construction and Sokini have used a very lightweight highly breathable engineered mesh uh, that's in place to try and keep your feet as cool as possible even when you're running in hot conditions the mesh has also been designed to actively pull away moisture from your feet trying to keep them nice and dry. Uh, the edge has been designed for sort of racing and speed so the upper is pretty stripped back. We've got a very thin gusseted tongue in the shoe and we don't have a lot of padding or structure around the ankle collar or in the heel. There's some structural overlays working around the heel and then around that toe box just for a bit more sort of structural substance but also to offer a bit more durability at the flex point of the shoe. Um, Sokini have also worked in some material overlays around those eyelets just to beef them up a bit we got a bit of a rubber overlay around the toe just as a toe bumper but to be honest it's still pretty soft Sokini have worked in a new sort of lace locking system into the upper as well and then finishing up we've got a handy pull tab on the tongue and we've got one on the heel as well there you have it that's how this performance based trail running shoe has been put together and we've definitely given it a thorough testing over the last few weeks I run it across the beautiful hail towers I run it along the stunning north coast of Cornwall 
and I've also run it up in the epic mountains around Chamonix. So let's find out how it's performed when it comes to grip, traction and comfort, and of course, speed. Now, if you've followed the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm not really a massive fan of putting a carbon plate in a trail running shoe. In the past, I've just found it's made that midsole a bit stiff and a bit rigid, especially when I'm running on technical trails. So when I heard all about the bold claims made by Saucony, how their carbon fiber plate was designed specifically for trail running and it was going to adapt to the terrain you're running on, I got all excited and I was really looking forward to testing them out. And I have to say that it's kind of lived up to those bold claims. So that plate has given me really good levels of propulsion and forward momentum as I've been driving uphill. But then when I've been running down the other side, it's felt nice and nimble and I felt really connected underfoot. So that clever plate design has really worked for me and I've actually found a pair of carbon plated trail running shoes that I enjoy running in. Being a big fan of Power on PB over the years, I had high hopes for this midsole and it's delivered on so many fronts, but it has fallen short on a couple. Firstly, it's felt very fast, very efficient. Whenever you sort of picked up a section of firmer, flatter trail, uh, or even better still, a section of tarmac, you just got that urge to run faster, run quicker, and really push on. And like any sock and issue of running with that speed roll technology, it's felt very efficient doing so. And it felt like I could sort of hold that tempo all day. So lots and lots of positives when it comes to that midsole construction. But, and it's a relatively big but, maybe I've had the odd uh, stability issues. Now, when I'm up on that forefoot feeling nice and strong, I felt very planted with that midsole and it's given me lots of confidence to run on technical trail. And in an ideal world, that's where we'd all be where we're, when we're running. But the reality isn't that. So there has been a few times when I've put more weight through that heel and I've had a few sketchy stability moments. So. Like I said, I took it out in the mountains the other day towards the end of that run on tired legs. I was having to deal with a pretty steep technical descent. I was definitely loading heavier through the heel. And there was a few times where, you know, I sort of nearly rolled my ankle and that's definitely not what we want building to the biggest race of the year. So I'd say if you are a very strong four foot runner, no issues at all. But if you do weight bear a bit heavier on a heel strike, you might have a few stability issues. The next thing is durability, or should I say the lack of durability when it comes to the midsole. And this is something I feared might happen because this Power Run PB compound is quite delicate. So on my run the other day up to Le Bravon, obviously out in the mountains, you're running on lots of technical trails, but I had to deal with some very steep descents on trails that were covered in really sharp rocks. Once I got back from the run, I felt great. My body felt really strong. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said for that midsole compound and it took a proper hammering. So after only 12 miles out in the mountains, mountains. I don't know whether you can see that there on the camera, but we've got big holes opening up all over that midsole. And you know, that's not great for a, a trail running shoe that's been designed to handle long runs over a big mix of terrain. And it's a real shame. The upper design has performed well and this nice lightweight engineered mesh has felt comfortable wrapped around my foot and highly breathable. On the run the other day, it was 28 degrees and I had no issues with hot sweaty feet or anything like that. It did take me a few times playing around with the laces to get the desired fit for my foot shape. Once I got that sorted out, it's been great. I felt well held around that heel and really well sort of locked into the heel of that upper. The only thing I would say is I'm not sure about this pull tab on the tongue because I don't really know what job it actually is supposed to do. And as far as I can see, it serves no purpose apart from getting in the way when you're trying to lace the shoe down. But all in all, uh, I've been really happy with how it's felt and fitted my foot shape. And it's just a really comfortable place to be. Finally, wrapping up performance, we moved down to the outsole. And this is an area of the indoor edge I was pretty confident about. I've never had any issue with uh, Saucony's trail running shoe outsoles and this one is no different. So uh, really good levels of grip whether it's been on wet or dry rock and this four mil lug has given me good levels of traction as well. Recently I've been running on lots of 
dusty, loose, slippy trails and it's coped with it really well. I think being a four mil lug shoe, um, maybe on really boggy, muddy trails in the depth of a British winter, it might struggle a bit. But apart from that, I think it's performed really well on everything else. So there you have it, the ups and downs of running in Sockney's first ever carbon plated trail running shoe. But we've reached that point of the review where we need to get some points on the Run For Adventure board. So let's start scoring and we're gonna start with the price first. Obviously with the shoe retailing for a very expensive 200 pounds here in the UK, it's gonna be hard to score this shoe highly. Yes, it has got a very clever carbon fiber plate worked into that midsole and I'm sure it has been put through a lot of development, but 200 pounds is still a lot of money to spend on a running shoe. So we're gonna score the Endorphin Edge a pricey three out of 10. Up next is comfort and performance and hands down the best carbon fiber plate I've tried in a trail running shoe. Super adaptable to the terrain you're running on and it doesn't compromise that midsole performance. That Power Run PB compound has run really well on 90% of the trails I've run it on. Yes, I did have a few little stability issues the other day when I was coming down those steep descents on tired legs and weight bearing a bit more through the hill. But on everything else, it's performed really well. No complaints when it comes down to the fit or the performance of the upper apart from this ridiculous heel tab that serves no purpose that I'd personally like to just remove from that upper and that power track rubber outsole has performed really well like I thought it would so when it comes down to comfort and performance for the endorphin edge we're going to score it a maybe it needs a little bit of tweaking 7 out of 10. The last topic to discuss is durability a very important one because we want our trail shoes to handle all the wear and tear we put them through as we hit the trails especially when they retail for 200 pounds. It's a shame because the endorphin edge has been let down on this front by that Power Run PB compound in the midsole. You know, if you spend a lot of time running on rocky trails, then maybe this isn't the trail shoe for you because after only 12 miles the other day, having big holes missing from that midsole is not a good thing and it doesn't look good for durability in the long run. Uh, it's a shame because the upper looks great. No signs of early wear at all. The flex point looks strong. The same can be said for that power track rubber outsole. No signs of early wear at all but because of that durability issue with the midsole it's going to have to be marked down so we're going to score it a slightly disappointing 5 out of 10 for durability so tallying up all the points the endorphin edge is going to come in with a slightly surprising 15 out of 30. When it comes down to the super subjective topic of looks, I love the design and the colorway of this shoe. I think this bright pink color option looks wicked, which leaves me even more disappointed when it comes to the durability issues that I've had, because maybe it is a little bit of style over substance, which I'm never a big fan of, but the shoe really does look great. When it comes to comparisons to the edge, it's pretty tricky because with that clever plate design and that power arm PB midsole, it's got quite a unique unique feel to it. So uh, other trail shoes with a plated midsole, you've got Hoka's Tecton X, you've got the North Face Flight Vectives, you've also got Kraft's Ultra Carbon Trail and you've got Salomon's Pulsar Trail Pro all trail shoes that would give you that sort of plated midsole experience. So wrapping up with a quick conclusion, and if you're after a performance-based trail running shoe that's gonna offer you lots of propulsion and energy return from that high-performing midsole compound, it's gonna be very comfortable over distance, it's got a nice lightweight, breathable, well-fitting upper, and you spend a lot of your time running on less technical trails, less rocky trails, then I think the Endorphin Edge actually performs in those types of conditions really well. Super impressed with how that carbon plate has performed and how adaptable it is to different trail running conditions. However, if you are the type of trail runner that gets out on rocky, super technical trails all the time, similar to what we've been running here in Chamonix, they're covered with lots of sharp, gnarly rocks, then I would say give the endorphin edge a miss because it just doesn't hold up well in that type of environment. And you know, long-term durability in those sorts of conditions doesn't look good. There you have it guys, another full in-depth review crushed at Run For Adventure. I always find it a bit of a shame when I review a shoe that I've been excited about and I've been looking forward to run and it ends a little bit disappointing like today's review. But I suppose that's life and we've got lots of other great shoes to review at Run For Adventure. 
adventure. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed it, really hope you found it helpful. If you have, you know what to do, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and it'd be great to get your feedback. So if you've been running in a pair of these, let us know all about it. How is your midsole compound holding up to the wear and tear? Let us know all about it in the comments below. Don't forget to check us out on our other social media platforms, whether it be Instagram, Facebook or Strava. I'm doing daily posts at the moment while we're out here training in the mountains and I'm hopefully going to be posting on Instagram throughout the main race just to keep you sort of updated with our progress. So definitely worth checking us out on those platforms. So I'll leave all the links below. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the great support you're giving us while we're out here at Chamonix. But as always, stay safe and keep on running. I think we cracked it. Does that mean I can get up off this? Oh, this log I've been sitting on has been so uncomfortable. That's sacrifice for you guys, for the channel. Oh.